This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Tonight on The South Today, we asked Broadcasting Minister Claire Curran how yesterday's budget will impact on news media. Invercargill Youth Councillors celebrate Pink Shirt Day with an afternoon tea. And scientists reveal their research into earthquakes across the Southern Alps. Kia ora, good evening, I'm Melissa Barton. Yesterday, Finance Minister Grant Robinson delivered the first budget of the Coalition Government's three-year term. Child poverty, health and infrastructure were the major winners. But with the Stuff Group closing 15 community titles, what about supporting quality public media in New Zealand? Back in her South Dunedin electorate today, Broadcasting Minister Claire Curran is fresh from Budget Day which saw her portfolio receive $15 million toward supporting quality public media in New Zealand. So, first question, what does that mean? Well, it means um, essentially non-commercial public media. Um, we know that uh, basically is where RNZ fits. Um, at the moment, RNZ is focused on radio and digital and a little bit of audiovisual, we're wanting to expand that out to become a fully fledged multimedia entity, a little bit like the ABC in Australia, but it's going to take some time. But we also want to invest more in New Zealand on air, which in which um, puts money into into quality content on other platforms, uh, and invests in you know, and basically in regional media as well. Claire Curran has specifically mentioned Radio New Zealand being a multi-platform provider. If a majority of funds goes to one news agency, how will that affect smaller regional players like Omaru's 45 South TV or Gisborne's Tairawhiti TV or Access Radio? Curran says she's seeking further advice. Uh, I'm receiving some advice from an advisory group that I've set up uh, that uh, look, have been looking into that. Um, now that the budget is out there, uh, I'm going to be uh, considering that advice over the next couple of weeks and I'll be taking a paper to Cabinet. Broadcasting, communications and digital media hasn't received much in the budget compared with other portfolios. Is there likely to be more funding next time around? There's some disappointment that there wasn't more money invested. It really is a down payment and I think it's a real, really strong signal that the government is really keen on investing more in public media. She says with news apps and a focus on social media, the way news is being reported and presented is changing rapidly. Daryl Baser, The South Today. Three people have been taken to hospital after a fiery crash in Southland this morning. A police spokeswoman says officers were called at 10am to a collision between two cars at the intersection of Longbush South Road and Rimu Road just east of Invercargill. Police say one person was critically injured and trapped in a car for 90 minutes. St John's spokesman Jared Campbell says ambulance officers treated three patients at the scene before they were transported to Southland Hospital. The Invercargill Youth Council are helping to raise awareness sh surrounding bullying in Southland. The young councillors held a pink shirt day afternoon tea to address the issue. The Invercargill City Youth Council was exceptionally bright on Wednesday afternoon. A pink themed afternoon tea was held to address bullying in Southland as part of the Mental Health Foundation's pink shirt day. One in every five people get bullied and then lead to a mental health illness later on in their lives. So um, by doing this and um, teaching other people you know, to stand up for one another and um, being aware of it, um, it just it, we hope to reduce bullying and hopefully reduce mental health issues in the future. And the Cargill City Councillors also joined the Youth Council for the event. And Henderson said their presence showed that it wasn't just the younger generation who supported the campaign. 
Well, I think it sort of shows that they believe it's a good idea too, and it also just sh that shows that even at you know an older age that they they can care, and I think it's good to see that that happening too. Because if they're doing it, maybe parents will be interested too, and and they can show their support as well. Councillor Alex Crackett said it was important for the councillors to participate to show bullying is not just an issue dealt with by youth. And it's really important to have these kind of messages throughout our workplaces because you're right, no matter where you are, what you're doing, you're going to encounter it. So it's a positive message and if we can start young that, you know, bullying is not okay, then it's absolutely something that I think that we should be adopting. For more information about how to prevent bullying, visit bullyingfree.nz. Anyone in need of support can call Youthline on 0800 37 66 33 or free text 234. Sharon Rees, The South Today. Tertiary Education Union organiser Sean Scott says morale is low as the University of Otago concludes its support services review. About 160 jobs will be lost in the review, which has been ongoing since the end of 2015. In April, the university announced that 86 employees have taken voluntary redundancy. Since then, another 20 staff have been granted voluntary redundancy, bringing the total to 106 redundancies. On average, the Alpine Fault ruptures in a massive earthquake every 300 years, and the last big one was in 1717. Scientists say their research reveals around 30 magnitude 8 quakes have shaken the Southern Alps over the light last 8,000 years. The Alpine Fault runs hundreds of kilometres up the spine of the South Island, from Fiordland along the western edge of the Southern Alps. Speaking at the fault line itself, Otago University lead scientist for Project AF8, Dr Caroline Orchison, shows where the tectonic plates meet. This light green rock is the Pacific Plate and it's been dragged up from depth over many millions of years and it's sitting on top of the Australian plate. So this is the Alpine Fault, an active tectonic plate boundary right before our very eyes. Based on this evidence, Orchison says it points to a sizeable quake in the next few years. It has the potential to release a magnitude 8 earthquake sometime in the next few years. So the paleoseismic evidence on the Alpine Fault tells us that over the last 8,000 years there have been 26 magnitude 8 earthquakes. Those events have happened incredibly regularly through time. She says the worst damage will be within 100 kilometres of the fault itself and being prepared is the key. When we have an Alpine Fault earthquake it's really important that people are prepared beforehand because the more prepared you can be, the more comfortable your life is going to be afterwards. She says in such an event, there will be both lateral and vertical movement, which could last up to four minutes. And ground close to the fault could be lifted up by about three metres and shifted sideways by about eight metres. Daryl Bazer, The South Today. Still to come on the South today, residents of a Wanaka rest home look to celebrate the eagerly awaited royal wedding in style, and another rest home in Omaru has set up a temporary collection of wedding dresses for their celebration of the wedding. For all your news from the southern regions as it happens, go to our Facebook page. The South Today, connecting you with your community, thanks to New Zealand On Air. For seed to germinate, why not do it the smart way? For instant results, call ReadyLawn today or for more information, go to readylawn.co.nz. If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a MOLMAP. MOLMAP is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life.
on again, the Star Regent 24 hour book sale. It starts noon the 8th of June. Don't miss out. At Action Engineering, the team make their mark as innovators in engineering because they don't just make things, they provide solutions. Call now on 477-1643 or go online to see the services they provide. Massive menswear sale on now. Oaks Campbell Menswear have bought out a top suppliers warehouse and factory shop. Nothing but bargains for you. Hurry in, south and in store only. Alex Campbell Menswear, it fits. At the Hard to Find Bookshop, we sell quality books on all subjects from the rare to the recent. And where viable, we will come to you. We have a great reputation for integrity and honesty, so if you're downsizing or sorting an estate and have books to sell, contact us. Helping New Zealanders to do more. Talk to MTF today. Garador Dunedin, delivering quality stylish garage doors in Dunedin for over 15 years. New doors, replacement doors, repairs and maintenance are all part of Garador's quality service. Garador Dunedin offers a full range of modern quality doors to suit any home. Come visit the team at 553 Kaikai Valley Road. Visit www.garador.co.nz or call us on 488 5676. on channel 39, Saturdays at 7, Sundays at 2, and Tuesdays at Welcome back. As many people around the country and the world look forward to the wedding of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, residents of Wanaka Rest Home Almsley House were treated to a wedding fashion show. Simon Henderson reports. To celebrate the royal wedding, Rest Home residents were treated to a display of 16 wedding dresses, modelled by care workers Molly Meehan and Anna Gomez. The show was a great success, with murmurs of approval and applause as each dress came out. And of course there was big excitement for Saturday when Prince Harry and Meghan Markle say I do at St George's Chapel at Windsor Castle. Simon Henderson for The South Today. This weekend's royal wedding has also been enthusiastically followed at a care home for the elderly in Omaru. The Iona and Livin Care Home has set up a temporary collection of wedding dresses as part of their celebration of the wedding. Oamaru's Iona and Liven Care Home is displaying close on a hundred wedding dresses from across the ages, with the two oldest dresses dating back to the 1920s. Senior Activities Coordinator Diane McCone says they come from all over the community. So there's some of our residents' dresses, some from their families, some from volunteers, some from their families, um, Sometimes just people just walk in and say, would you like my wedding dress? There's staff wedding dresses, there's um, members from the Everline Parish, they've brought in great big pictures and the wedding dress from the pictures from 1958 and yeah, it's just amazing where they've come from. The amount of wedding dresses loaned for the event has exceeded her expectations. I wanted to get 60. And uh, I don't know why, I just thought I'd get, want to get 60, but I've got 87 and 8 bridesmaids dresses at the moment. So it's fantastic and they're still coming in, so it's really, really neat. One of the contributors to the collection is Susan Clark, who chose to wear a 1950s wedding dress from her mother at her own wedding. I like the look of it, I love the lace and um, had a nice long veil and things. So um, 
I said, if it fitted me, could I wear it? And she said yes, so she was quite honoured that I had asked. McCone says the collection of wedding dresses has been positive for the home's residents. It stimulates our residents and, and gets them really interested in things and gets their families interested and they remember so much. They love talking about their weddings. Not all of them have got their wedding dresses, of course. They've been torn up for christening gowns, for rubbish gowns, for anything. Um, they just love talking about things that have happened. The dresses will be on display until after Queen's birthday weekend and the possibility of a day that the public can view the dresses for a gold coin donation is still in discussion. Awamaru Mail for The South Today. After the break on The South Today, a Dunedin composer will have his work performed in Britain next month with support from a local choir and we have the weekend's weather for you. risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a MOLMAP. MOLMAP is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. with this product demonstration, Ralphie. Oh, relax, it's all about balance. The balance between softness and strength. And my balance is perfect. Mm, so we won't fall. Of course not. Hi, Ralphie. Oh, hey, oh. whoa. whoa. <laughs> you fell for it. Yep, I fell for it. Cotton Softs, softness and strength you can trust. I'm Cotton Soft on the environment too. At the Hard to Find Bookshop, we sell quality books on all subjects from the rare to the recent. And where viable, we will come to you. We have a great reputation for integrity and honesty. So if you're downsizing or sorting an estate and have books to sell, contact us. Helping New Zealanders to do more. Talk to MTF today. Massive menswear sale on now. Oaks Campbell Menswear have bought out a top suppliers warehouse and factory shop. Nothing but bargains for you. Hurry in, South and in store only. Alex Campbell Menswear, it fits. It's on again, the Star Regent 24 hour book sale. Starts noon the 8th of June. Don't miss out. At Action Engineering, the team make their mark as innovators in engineering because they don't just make things, they provide solutions. Call now on 477-1643 or go online to see the services they provide. Wait for seed to germinate, why not do it the smart way? For instant results, call Ready Lawn today or for more information, go to readylawn.co.nz. Saturdays, 2 p.m. Sundays, 3.30 Tuesdays, Oakley's off the bar.
Thanks for staying with us. Dunedin composer Anthony Ritchie is having his work Gallipoli to the Somme performed at two events in Britain next month. Accompanying him will be several members of the local choir that premiered the piece in 2016. The South Today met up with the composer. University of Otago Associate Professor in Music Anthony Ritchie is one of New Zealand's most prolific composers. And he's looking forward to the performance of his recently written oratorio, Gallipoli to the Somme, next month in London. The work was originally commissioned by the Dunedin Symphony Orchestra. Um, well, about 2015 I was uh, approached by the orchestra to uh, commission to, to write a work commemorating World War I uh, for the Dunedin City Choir and, um, and the orchestra. The piece premiered in 2016, with the City Choir Dunedin being backed by the Dunedin Symphony Orchestra. The oratorio is inspired by World War I and uses texts from poets and writers, especially those of soldier Alexander Aitken, whose book Gallipoli to the Somme was published in 1963. Well, I took Aitken as a starting point. His own experience is very vividly written about, and um, so I described his experiences. I wanted to take a sort of a personal approach, so one person's perspective, but, but then I included other perspectives from nurses and lovers and uh, other people, not just soldiers. So I wanted it to be sort of a holistic experience, I guess, of, of the war. Next month's performances in Britain will see the Parliament Choir and South Bank Sinfonia being joined by about 30 singers from the City Choir Dunedin who are paying their own way to participate in the prestigious event. Oh, well, it's really exciting. It's not every day you have a piece performed overseas and uh, also in such a good venue at Queen Elizabeth Hall in London and, and at Oxford as well. So it's, it, it's a real buzz and I'm really looking forward to it. Professor Ritchie and the choir members will also be joined by Dunedin locals conductor David Birchall and soprano soloist Anna Lees, who will add their voices to the performance. Rudy Adrian, The South Today. And now recapping tonight's top stories on The South Today. Today, Broadcasting Minister Claire Curran revealed how yesterday's budget will impact on news media. And the Cargill Youth Councillors celebrated Pink Shirt Day with an afternoon tea. And scientists announced their research into earthquakes across the Southern Alps. And now a look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT. Welcome, Phil Somerville. Yeah, well, hi, Melissa. Um, first and of all, got course, a photo. Yes, a royal. Royal Superfan, as we call her, um, Trish Ban Branby, planning a party like lots of other people. Of course, you have to come dressed in royal gear or wedding dresses, so that should be fun. I think a lot of people, it's not everyone's cup of tea by any stretch, but lots of people have fun tomorrow night. And we've got uh, a few stories tomorrow. There's a page with a story about the royal bridal fashions over the years, a little picture of Queen Victoria, an engraving and what she wore to her wedding, and of course Princess Di. I oh know, uh, no one will forget the big puffy sleeves on that one. <laughs> yes, yes, the meringue they call the it. Meringue, the yep. meringue, yeah. And uh, Queen Elizabeth as well, so look for that. Uh, editorial on the subject and one or two other stories. So we look forward to uh, also having lots of pictures in Monday's paper to wrap the thing up. I know, I'm looking, ex I'm looking really forward to the wedding. Yeah, interestingly, they say at this party there might be a laptop in the corner so any of the guys can you watch the Highlanders play the Waratah as the lead into the wedding takes place. They can sit in the corner and do that. <laughs> um, uh, news, Tyree Way, big stink over the rendering plant out there. Neighbours are not too happy with the smell. Uh, not so good news at the salmon hatchery. Vandal's been at it again. Uh, that's not good. Mix, the weekend mix, that last Friday night it was winning the uh, New Zealand's prize for the best inserted newspaper magazine, which was great, ahead of the various New Zealand Herald magazines and the Press and Dominion magazines. And, and tomorrow there's, a, as usual, a wide mix of stories. There's one from The Observer about uh, growing old and exercise and 
uh, veteran athletes and discussing high intensity exercise versus gradual exercise and the values of those things. Another story about food safety and um, you know, the question of if you drop something on the floor and pick it up quickly, does that make a difference? What, the five second the rule? The five second rule, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And mixed reports on that, interesting enough. And other things along that, or a big story about the Man um, Booker the Book Prize and evaluating the, the books and those. So that's a few of the things in the mixed uh, tomorrow. Well, you can check out the award winning mix in tomorrow's ODT. Thank you, Phil. And now it's time for tomorrow's weather. Tonight's weather proudly brought to you by Mole Map. Today's southern view is looking up Dunedin's Princes Street. Looking at the situation, a cold west to southwesterly airflow will bring cloud and showers to western and southern areas this weekend, but it should be mostly fine breezy weather elsewhere. The cold airflow will continue next week with snow lowering and squally winds. Looking at the southern towns, Balclutha, Catlins, Lumsden and Gore are all in for strong winds and a few showers with a high of 10. Looking at what's in store in the Central Lakes area, it will be fresh winds with some cloud for most of you, with Alexandras expecting a high of 11, Wanaka 10 and Queenstown 9. Tiana is a bit more stormy with strong winds and a few showers with a high of 10. Looking at the northern towns along the coast, Omaru and Timaru are in for moderate winds, peppered with some cloud and a high of 12. Further inland, Omarama and Twizel can expect fresh winds with some cloud and a high of 10. In Dunedin, it will be fine tonight with some cloud and an overnight low of 6. Early morning showers clear tomorrow with sunny periods increasing. Cold winds will decrease becoming westerly with a high of 11 and a low of 7. Cloud will be increasing on Sunday with periods of showers around the middle of the day and fresh breezy cool winds with an expected high of 13 and a low of 5. And in Invercargill it should be cloudy tonight with gusty winds and an overnight low of 7. Cloudy with showers tomorrow and fresh to strong cold west to southwest winds, a high of 10 and a low of 5. And you can expect similar weather on Sunday with an expected high of 11 and a low of 6. That's our news for this Friday. For the latest news from the Southern Region, you can follow us on Facebook, YouTube and at channel39.co.nz. We leave you with a montage of the week that was. I hope you have a great weekend. Take care. Ka kite anō. This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.